Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds, all of the nerds again, and today we are going to bring you something slightly different. We're going to do what we think is the best current Indian 2020-11. They're in the middle of the series against Bangladesh, um, so it's we thought it's a good idea, it's something that's relevant, um, and a lot of the Indian players who we think might actually make up the best 11 aren't actually playing in this series, so It'll be interesting to hear what you think as well. So if you disagree with us, which is highly likely, let us know your thoughts um, in the comments. And we might have a bit of disagreement as well. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we'll we'll just get started. Um, so best place to start was probably the opening batsman. So what do you guys, who do you, would you say is kind of in the picture in terms of best openers to go in those slots? Num- number one pick has to be Yashasvi Jaiswal for me. Yes, um, I agree. You know, we, I think um, if you were to talk about all format players, Yashasby Jaiswal's right up there. And, you know, just uh, and, and, and by all format, I mean they just get in on merit any format, any team in the world. At the moment, he is so, so good. Um, his ability to play proper cricket shots and the unorthodox ones, be ultra aggressive in T20 and and in all formats, but also be able to soak up pressure. Um, I think, and, and the stats don't lie either. You know, he is sort of up up there with the best in the world at opening at the moment, um, and certainly India's best prospect. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd have to say Shazvi Jaiswal is has locked down that number one spot. Yeah, and and we sadly won't see him in the T20 I series because he's been rested from that from that series, which is fine, giving other people a go. Um, but in terms of the other opener, I think that's where India struggle a bit. And I say they struggle in the sense that they have too many options. Mm. I think Jaiswell nails that number one spot, hands down, no question about it. But I can off the top of my head think of three people <laughs> who easily could um, do that second number one slot. And, you know, you've got the old guard in Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, both mm. who have proved time and time again that they are two of the greatest batters to ever play the game. Um, either of them could open as well as Shutman Gill. And, you know, he's the other sort of new kid on the block. Shutman Gill had this fantastic sort of period in 2021, 2022, and then sort of has been a, a bit overshadowed by Yashasby Jaiswell in sort of 2023 and 2024. Like Jaiswell's come through and just been even... And, and, and you know what? That's not a bad thing for India, you know, like having a new young super, uh, superstar in Shutman Gill and another new young superstar in Yashasby Jaiswell. I mean, the, f- the future of having those two opening up and then having the problem, as it were, of having Kohli and Rohit and, you know, having too many good players to take that number two spot. Like, yeah, it's it's hard to fit all of the best Indian players in. And you just look at stats. I mean, look at Kohli, like, probably one of the best Indian T20 players in the world. Like, he scored the most runs in the IPL. You know, he's such a good T20 player and has proved that over time. Are we talking about, if we're talking about India's best team as of today, I think Kohli fits in. But mm. then when you see, and of course he does, is Virat Kohli, is King Kohli. Like Kohli will fit into any team until he yeah. finishes. I guess the question as is... As much as it annoys us, but is he there for the future? Does he open? That's the question. Does he open? Zach, what do you think? Well, I've, pr- I've posed a problem. What do you think, Zach? Well, I don't think Kohli should open. Whether he fits in, I, I do think personally think Kohli should potentially fit into this team but we'll see how we go with that um but Rohit Sharma is the interesting one should India move on from him because in the last two years he's still done decently for India he did okay in the 2020 World Cup he scored a century in the last two years as well so he's he's definitely still got it in him to do well but the question is are there better more exciting options um because someone like Kaya Rahul we know he can take his time we know Yashasvi Jais will takes time at the start of his innings and then he can accelerate through. But are they looking for someone, um, maybe like a Rutteraj Gaikwad, for example, who can go from ball one? Um, and that that's really important. It's someone like Ishan Kishan, even though Ishan Kishan's form of late hasn't been as good as we want. Um, I would love can it. I if throw I'm out sure. a name there? Yeah. Sanju good. Samson. And I'm sure, I'm sure I've just cut you off on the name that I'm, uh, that you were about to say. And it's Abhishek the exact Sharma. same name I'm going to say. <laughs> Abhishek Sharma. Yeah. You know, the, 
he's not the only sort of uh, left-handed, ultra-aggressive opening batter that plays for Sunrisers Hyderabad that can bowl some handy spin. Mm. But he is up there uh, in terms of being the best one. Yeah, it, it's him or Travis Head. And honestly, he is in that conversation for me. Travis Head, obviously, he's proven he's you know, going around the world and stuff. But you can't play for India. Abhishek Sharma. <laughs> I, I think Abhishek Sharma is going to be this future um, sort of revelation for India. Mm. I, I've, I've noticed it for a while. In the side Mushtaq Ali Trophy, he was brilliant um, time and time again. He's, he's another person that can perform in all formats. Um, and yeah, when he's playing for Punjab, um, the domestic side, sadly not the IPL one, mm. he, he is absolutely brilliant. And for Sunrisers, at least in the last season, he was unreal. Like it, the aggression was unparalleled. It was ridiculous. Um, and I, I think it wouldn't hurt India having two ultra aggressive, ultra talented left arm openers. Mm. Uh, that, that does I've got no problem with that. Um, so, so we. So I, no, I would personally open with Jaiswal and Abhishek. Okay, because we're definitely we're definite on Jaiswal. So Benji, you happy with Abhishek, or would you like to see maybe Rutraj Gaikwad? I don't know he's your Chennai boy. Maybe that that pays something. Like I'm I'm between I personally between um, uh, Abhishek. I feel Shabbat like I feel Gaikwad. like. I feel like if we're talking about their best team right now, we're not talking mm. about the best team for the future, their best team right now. Um, I think the fact that Rutraj Gaikwad hasn't been picked for the current T20I series says a lot. So I think if we're not talking about one of the big boys in Kohli or Rohit, mm. I mean, I'd probably open, I'd probably slow open with Shipman Gill if it sure. was me. Mm. I'd still open with Jaiswell and Gill because I think that they're a, a class act. Yeah. And I think there's even a strong argument to open with Jai Swell and Coley and put Gill at three. Yeah. Like that that's how good the India are as a squad and, and 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 have that level of depth. You know, we're not talking about their future looking team, are we? We're talking about their best team as of right now. Yeah. And well, I would I would argue that maybe Shubman Gill, based on his overseas record, because we're thinking the best overseas Shubman Gill isn't doing as well in 2020 internationals. Um he's striking at about 115. When he's playing overseas, which compared with his overall strike rate of 140, isn't as impressive. Um, mm. Whereas I guess Coley, we know he's good everywhere. Um, whether Coley fits into the middle order or not, um, yeah, who knows? So if we were to choose between someone like Abhishek Sharma and Virat Coley, I would probably go with Virat Coley for right now. I mean, look how he performed in the IPL last year. Um, he even though Abhishek Sham was super exciting, I think Kohli outperformed him. Um, so, yeah, we'll hold that for now because we'll see what happens in the middle order, whether we can squeeze in Kohli or not. Um, yeah. But players from three to five or six, I reckon, um, for me, there's there's a standout who has to go in, and that's Suri Kumar Yadav. He is India's highest 2020 run scorer for the last two years. He's got an average of over 45. He's got a strike rate of 160. We know how good he is. Um, he's captaining in this Bangladesh India series. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, he's a he's a no brainer. Are you guys in agreement? And do you have any other no brainers as well? Um, I would throw out. Uh, wait, wait, which position are you talking about? Are we three to uh, six. Just, yeah, just the middle order. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, Sky is. Yeah, that, that's the most easy decision you can. Nice three or four. Sky, Sky is the bummer of the middle order, where it's just like, well, yeah, you've obviously got him in. Um, <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert for the later for the later picks. Um, but I'd be tempted to say that Hardik Panja is sort of in and around that. Um, I, again, we're, you know, we're, we're talking about balance here, mm. and this is he, he is a balancer. He is yeah. he has the ability to play pretty much any position. Um, he is the Indian Ben Stokes. Um, he can, he can perform any role with the ball and the bat um, when he's not injured. So yeah, he absolutely is the Indian Ben Stokes, or Ben Stokes is the uh, the English Hardik Pandya. Um, but yeah, I, I I would say that Hardik Pandya slots in there somewhere, but I don't know what his best position is, and that's something that confuses me because when he's been the captain of himself, 
um, specifically at uh, Gujarat Titans in the IPL. Um, but sometimes, you know, when he's captain for India, he quite often will bat himself quite high up the order and play like a bit of an anchor role. He'll kind of go in at three. At, at, you know, he's gone in at high as three, at, as three. And I don't know if I like that as his best role. Mm. I think I prefer it when he's just like a fun, you know, that annoyingly aggressive. When it was the middle order of like Kyron Pollard and Hardik Pandya for Mumbai Indians, and they'd just hit every ball for six. Yeah. That's the kind of Hardik Pandya I think is is the best, where he's just being ultra aggressive. So yeah. I'd potentially say him at six and Sky sort of towards that three, four kind of area. I think I think Hardik Pandya is definitely a five five slash six in terms of other people for that five slash six slot. Um, now that he's back from injury, I'd love to see Rishabh Pant in there as well. Like you know, as the mm-hmm. keeper, I think he's I think he's India's best wicketkeeper batter. Mm-hmm. I know Ishan Kishan's in the conversation. I know Sanju Samson's in the conversation. In terms of just flair, general fun, and also keeping ability, I think Rishabh Pant's in there. And you know, his chat from behind the stumps earns him bonus points in there as well. Yeah. So it's mostly it's a vibes pick, but also <laughs> it's it, it is backed up with some. Yeah. It's both with wrong. stats, and I think you know if if Pant hadn't been out, you know, for the best part of last year, mm. you know, with that horrific injury, then I don't think that'd even be a question. I think he'd have solidified that spot completely. It's only yeah. because he's been injured and they've had to look for uh, other options mm. that there's even a conversation about it. I, I, and and again, if you're looking at that, if we're going through that sort of top six, then you know you've got Jaiswal, who's our number one pick. Someone like Gill or Abhishek or Rohit or Kohli, the, those filling two and three, oh, Guy Quad in there or Guy Quad. You know, you've got pick two, pick two of them to be in two and three. You've got Sky at four, Pan at five, Hardik at six. I mean, that's a very strong top six. Yeah, I, I reckon we're missing one person though, who I would like to see at number six, and that Go is on. probably one of the best finishers in twenty twenty cricket, and that's Rinku Singh. Yeah, for me, I was thinking that there was there was a big yeah. square space for a big yeah. square head, <laughs> big square, yeah. and, he has, and he Riku has Singh. Um, but then I, I guess what what you pointed out, Ben, is the fact that Rishabh Pant is the one behind the stumps. I mean, if Rishabh Pant doesn't make it into the team, then that means you have to play Gaikwad because or Kerala because Gaikwad can keep as well, can't he? Or is he not? Is yeah, he not ever kept in his entire life? <laughs> The the point is anyway, they, they, need a, they need a keeper in there and Rishabh Pan would have to slot in at probably that number five five um or probably number four if we've got Hardik at five Rinko at six um but yeah it's it'll be interesting to see because I know that India played some players like Shivam Dubey because he's good against spin but for me he's not as consistent as someone like Rishabh Pan can be well, he doesn't move um, his feet. Uh, yeah, he just stands and swings, <laughs> just stands and swings from the hip. Yeah, he does really well though. As far as players that just stand and swing, he is really good. So, yeah, but I, yeah for me, I, I'm in agreement. I think Rinku Singh. The stats don't lie. Um, he is far and away the the best finisher at the moment. Mm. Um, so that gives us Jai Swal, A N Other. As the opener, we've we've got about a short list of about five players that could open. Um, the correct answer is Abhishek Sharma, and then I think we have to do Sky, Pant, Hardik, and Rinku. You're leaving personally. out Kohli. Well, you know Kohli could stick in there. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> maybe I have Kohli as a specialist number eight, as as a as a, as a, as a vibes pick. We're you know, not getting any more views on this video. He I would comes have in at eight opening. and he's just he, he fires them up and he'll finish yeah. a game every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I would have Coley opening with um Chiswell. And then you can have yeah, I Sky like three, um Pant at four, Hardick at five, Rink at six. That would be my preference. Where because mm-hmm. as we talked about earlier, I think Coley versus Abhishek right now, as Benji was saying, if yeah. it's the in the eleven right now, then Coley probably pips Abhishek, but maybe yeah, in two or three years. I don't think I don't think I, I think that there's no probably pips about it. Like Kohli far and away is the yeah. pick over Abhishek at the minute. Yeah. Like yeah. there's not even a conversation. Totally give it five, you know, give it two years. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the matchup. Oh, All yeah. right. 
but yeah, no. Yeah, I'm, if it's so, sorry, if if it's against Punjab Kings, then yeah, Abhishek Sharma should be in there because he always <laughs> scores so many runs against Punjab. So, but right, we've got we've got one to six. Then we've got Jaiswal yeah. Kohli, Sky Pant, Hardik, Rinku. Number seven. Two I'm names. confident. There are two people that I think are the names that could fit in that slot, and that's Axar Patel or Ravi Jadeja. Those would be my two. Based on form in the Indian team, and maybe this is down to the options that are there, Axar Patel, stats-wise, completely overtakes Ravi Jadeja in terms of runs. Uh, I think bowling ability, there is something to be said for Ravi Jadeja versus Axar Patel. But in terms of how we've seen him in the IPL um, for Delhi Capitals um, and also in, in recent form for India, his ability to strike at over 150 as well, Axar Patel is the perfect foil for um, someone like Rinku Singh as well. So for me, Axar Patel has to fit in at number seven, but you guys might argue for Jadeja or even Washington Sundar. Who knows? I So Washington Sundar has the ability to go really economical sometimes, mm. um, but other times he's just like useless. And that's, yeah. that, that's the kind of thing you can't quite have in a, in a really strong T20 side when you've got as many players to pick from as India do. So for that reason, Sundar doesn't get in there for me. And Jadeja, um, I, th- I think, yeah, he probably is the better bowler, at least the more consistent bowler. He is, mm-hmm. you know, an incredibly clever and wily bowler um, and obviously an outstanding fielder. But I think in T20s, Axel Patel actually does bip, bip into the post. Yeah. Um, I think with that, with that batting, like you mentioned, his ability to be versatile with his batting as well. If, if, if India were 40 for five, you know, in, in seven overs, then having Axar Patel to come in would be incredibly helpful. Whereas Jadeja, I, I just, I, I don't know how much he'd be able to kick through the gears. Axar Patel, he can, he can either go from ball one or he can grind through the gears. Whereas I think um, Jadeja, he, I've, we've seen it a few times and this is you know, less stats based I guess more of a, like a sort of general thing of, of just anecdotal wisdom <laughs> where we've seen him come in in a situation where he's needed to strike at sort of that 120 just consolidate the innings mm-hmm. and then he can't really kick on and yeah. it's in those final few overs that he's swinging and he just can't quite do it yeah. and that's where you can see the frustration in him mm-hmm. but you know it, he, he couldn't quite do it, whereas I think Axel Patel would have that ability more yeah. so. So that's why I'd go for him at seven. I think having said that, I'm going to um, bring in the equal and opposite view. Okay. <laughs> I think with um, with Jadeja, he is, in my view, he's a bit of a Ben Stokesy pick. Like, he's a match winner. He's someone that actually, yeah, might have that issue kicking on in some games, but in real high high intensity games he's a match winner i mean if you look at um ipl 2023 i want to say chennai final like it was jadeja coming in and playing the innings that won that game for chennai that won the ipl for chennai like he has that he has that star quality match winning ability in there as well mm. and you do want that in and around the side having said that this india side is very much a match winning team anyway you know, any one of those players we've talked about in, in the top six can come out and win, and win you a game. Yeah. <clears throat> so do you need to fill the team with full-on stars who are always going to win you the games? Or are we looking at more of a stats-based approach? Yeah, if we're doing a stats-based approach, I think Axel Patel definitely takes it for the batting. He's, um, I mean, he's played a lot more games than Jadeja this year, um, but he's struck at a far higher strike rate. He's far more consistent with the bat and you know I for was it Delhi I think last year when we were doing the IPL was like consistently was the player that was coming out mm-hmm. and saving them and I think you know there's even an argument in the IPL to push him up to sort of number five if 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 they they need yeah. when it comes to the, the Axar versus Jadeja my my heart wants to say Jadeja but my head won't say Axar yeah. so I think it, that's it's, a, it's a difficult pick <laughs> I think India over uh, India are a team that always stick with the same players. I think we're seeing that 
But I think one thing that's come to light over the last one or two years is that Jadeja is a far better test player in terms of batting. And Axel mm-hmm. Patel seems to be a far better T20 batsman. Maybe far better is too much, I don't know. But I think Axel Patel is better in that 2020 role. And I think it's showing a lot of maturity that India are picking Axel Patel ahead of Ravi Jadeja. Um, whereas in previous years, I don't think they necessarily would have done. Um, yeah, but good. going on to the bowlers, because we've got two all bowlers in yeah. Hardik and Jad- mm. uh, Jadeja, Axel Patel. Axel. So we've got a seamer and a spinner. So who are our four bowlers? I mean, we're, we're we giving this pick to one. play all, like in all conditions, the best team. Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon we want one spinner or two spinners more? Or do we think... Well, I mean, you have, to pick, you have to pick Bumrah. Yeah. Regardless. So one of that spot is Bumrah. That's just not even a conversation. Mm. Um, I like having three seamers in a T20 attack. Yeah. Um, if one of them is Hardik Pandya, that's fine by me. So if we were to pick two seamers and two spinners, that gives sort of six bowling options um, with the two all-rounders in there as well. So that would be my balance. I don't know what you think. I, I think you need to have two spinners. Um, that's that's a fundamental in T20s because you, if, you've got Axel is, already. Yeah. So I'm saying in the total side, you yep. need to have at least eight overs of spin that you can turn to in yep. order to you know really lock down a, a team if it is turning. Um, now the way Bumrah sometimes bowls his off cutters. You could even say he's a fast off spinner. Um, but realistically, I, I think you definitely need two spinners. In which case, Zach, can you give me a, a short list of of spinners in your opinion? Because I, I've got an idea of who I'd want, but I'm, I'm aware that you've got stats in front of you that it would be good to have a short list. Yeah. And then we can kind of pick from there. I would, I would say there are three main options and they're all leggies. But they might bowl with a different arm. So Kuldeep Yadav, yeah. I think, is the obvious choice. But then you've got Ravi Bishnoi, who has played a lot of 2020s for India in recent times as kind of like India's second 11, um, almost, when they've had other players busy. Um, and then the other one, who hasn't played much 2020 cricket at all for India recently, but has been amazing in the IPL, and that's Yuzvendra Chahal. I, I think it would be bad of us to not give him a mention. So those would be my three. Um, I don't, I can't think of anyone else who bears a mention in the best current India 2020 side. But of I think those three, one, who would you one of the player that sits in there as well and could also be a shout out for the number eight slot is Ashwin. Yeah, much as I'd hate to say it, it pains me to say it, <laughs> but Ashwin has a shoe in for the best 11. I think also giving the, op- the off spin option as well. And he's good so if you bat. were to have if you were to have someone like a a cool deep Yadav would be my pick, but he's an out and out rabbit. He's a number eleven. He's not going to offer anything with the bat. I wouldn't you know, say that. I'd no, say I'd say, say number eight. Yeah, I, I what? Think, yeah, cool deep isn't isn't no. Sorry, world. sorry, Chahal, Chahal, Chahal's oh, a, 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 a rabbit. No, cool deep can hold a bat. Yeah, but he's yeah. not. I wouldn't have him as a number eight. I think Ashwin is a bit is more of a number eight. I think, yeah, Kuldeep's a bit better than Bummer with a bat. And again, Bummer's no mug, but... I guess it, this this raises a really interesting question, actually, which is, what do you actually need from a number eight? Because I think this is... Number eight and number seven have been, like, the the question marks in a T20 side since the invention of the format. Number seven, I think we've figured out a bit more now. It's like you're looking for as close to a genuine all-rounder or bowling all-rounder that you can get, they do need to be able to bat. And, and number eight one. is is kind of where number seven was back, you know, the, the conception of, of T20s, where it's like, right, well, the actual game time and the amount of balls they're going to face in the, like, you know, in a 50-game career is going to be negligible for a number eight bowler or for, for a number eight batter. Um, so realistically, bowling needs to be their main skill set. However, they do need to be able to at least hold up an end, if not kind of hit the odd four to finish off a game. Mm. So for me, I think out of those options, Chahal 
isn't one of them. And for the lack of having another seam bowling all rounder that is a genuinely good seam option that could slot in at a number eight slot, because I, I don't think there is one off, off the top of my head. I can't like Shammy, Deepak Chahar. No. Deepak Chahar is a question brain. mark. His bowl is not the good Lord enough. Lord Ficker, maybe. Yeah. Shardle. Shardle Tucker, again, it's, it's the bowling that's the issue. He's yeah. not He's good a enough. He's a luxury player. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sh- Shivam Dubey, if he was better at bowling, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of the kind of person you want at number eight. But yeah, yeah I, I think I think Kuldeep Yadav, because he turns it the opposite way to Axar Patel, he can turn it both ways. Um, he has shown himself to be incredibly versatile with the ball. You know, the fact that he's managed to speed up his his deliveries overall over the last couple of years has transformed him into a better bowler. But then he still has the ability to toss it up when he needs to. Um yeah, for me, he is the best option. However, Ashwin, I think, is the honourable mention. And if yeah. Kul, if Kuldeep was to be injured, I think, again, because you've got the idea of them t- the two spinners turning it opposite ways, yeah. um, Ashwin is creative and he, he is a mm. he is a good batter. Yeah. So well, I, reckon, I think he's definitely an option. I reckon yeah. the difference in 2020 batting between Kuldeep Yadav and Ashwin doesn't outweigh the fact that Kuldeep is... The, like the gap between their bowling ability in 2020 yeah. is Cooley far outweighs that. Um, I think I that's why we have to go with him. I, I think I, I think Cooley is the if you have like first name on the team sheet for each position, like your first name on the team sheet for a batter is Jaiswell, your first team on the team sheet for all rounder is Hardik Pandya. Hardik Pandya, your first team on the team sheet for fastballer is Bumrah, your first name on the team sheet for spinner is yeah. Cooley Yadav. Yeah. So I think that's what we have. If we're looking at our four bowlers, though, so eight to 11, one of them has to be Bumrah. In my view, one of them has to be Kuldeep. Mm. So that's giving us two spinners and two seamers. I think Arshdeep Singh is the, is your third s- seamer. And then that yeah. gives you that sort of extra pick. So that then can be, if you'd like it to be, an extra seamer if you need it. Or you can have an Ashwin or you could have a Ravi Bishnoi in there. Yeah, I completely agree that Arshdeep Singh has to fit in there. I mean, he's been the the mainstay of the Indian 2020 bowling lineup for a good while now. And his ability to bowl with the new ball at the death, um, even through the middle sometimes, he's just, yeah, he's done really well for India. Um, his bowling strike rate as well is 13, which is one of the best um, that That's India have at other than Bumro, who's is insane, and then Kuldeep Yadav, like that's the third best they've got. So it makes sense that he's in there, and he's been one of the best bowlers in the IPL for a few seasons. So he has to go in. But that leaves us with one spot left, and this is where it gets tricky because India have <sighs> a few options. They've used Mukesh Kumar a few times, but he doesn't convince me. There's Mohammed Siraj, and we can tell in the IPL some days he's really good. Some days he's not so good. Um, and then there's Mohammed Shami, who I would say is the best option. However, he hasn't played much recently, but does he still fit in as that number one option? So I feel like those are the ones to consider, but there may be other ones that you might. might I'm, I'm going to throw out another one, if mm-hmm. um, if it's all right with you guys. And that would be um, Mayank Yadav. Okay. Yeah. The out-and-out pacer um, that we saw come to light in the, in the IPL. I think, you know, people like him. I, I, there are a couple of, you know, decent paces at the moment Forced. that are coming through. Um, but yeah, I think, I think Mayank Yadav was the one that impressed me the most, where he was just absolutely rapid and accurate with it as well. Um, now, there are injuries to consider, but I think an out-and-out pacer, like a really fast pacer, would complete that lineup for India. I think it would give them that X factor that they need. I think it would help them get the break up, breakthroughs in the middle overs. Um, and you know, if you've got somebody that can bowl sort of 95 miles an hour, that on their day is going to be hitting the Orcas. In the same way that like Mahavid Siraj, when he's on his day, he's really good, but he's still not bowling 95 miles an hour. Yeah. Imagine Mohammed Siraj's like, good days, but 10 miles an hour faster. Bless you, Benji. Um, that would just be absolutely unreal for India, and I think it would complete their bowling attack. So that that's the that's the shape I'm looking at. 
Mm. Um, now there are young players, and that's kind of where India are struggling at the moment. Is that their out and out quicks are really fast. <laughs> Sorry, I've seen Benji sneeze. I keep muting myself for trying to speak and then sneezing again. Um, but yeah, like you know, it was what was the name of the Sunrisers player? Um, that it was that you know, Indians thought that that would be the guy, yeah. That's the one, yeah. You know, there have been players that have been close, and I think, yeah. As soon as they figure out who it is, but at the moment, I'd say Martin Kiadov. Who, yeah. who you guys think? I, that? You you almost convinced me because I I was almost there with you in that. Yes, Martin Kiadov. Like your argument is very good. Like mm. right now, he's probably the most exciting option to fit into that that side. However, he hasn't been tested overseas. Yeah, which is the one mm. point. Whereas yeah, someone yeah. like Mohammed Shami, who I'm going to keep coming back to. He has been tested overseas. We know how good he is in all conditions yes. and how reliable. I don't he is. think. I don't think he's been proven at the world stage. I think, yeah, he was very exciting in IPL twenty twenty four. Um, whether we see him again in IPL twenty twenty five, I hope we do. Um, it will be interesting to see if he gets a cap in this T twenty I series with all the new rules that have come into place. Um, with you know, if Delhi wants to retain him. <clears throat> oh, sorry. He's he's Delhi in the domestic. He's looked now super giants in the in the oh, IPL. Yeah. I was going to say, it, yeah. It will ruin. It will ruin. Sorry, yeah. De- Delhi is, is is domestic team. It will ruin Lucknow's purse if they mm. try to retain him if he gets capped. So that would be, you know, the BCCI could really uh, have fun with LSG there. Um, I don't think he's tried on on the world stage. I think it comes back to the fact with what do you want from that last bowler? Do you want an additional seam option? Bear in mind in our 11, we've got three seamers already. Do you want a fourth seamer? Or, you know, because you, you've got that fifth bowler already in, in Axel Patel and Hardik Pandya, both of who could be out and out of bowling options. Anyway, like we're spoilt for choice for, for bowlers in this 11. So do you go to an extra spinner? Do you have like, you know, an Ashwin who can bat a bit more? Do you so then have three spinners and three seamers? There's so many different options that you, you could come in there. I think if you want a seamer, I agree with you, Zach. I think Mohamed Shami is the option. Um, he's just so tried and tested on that world stage. And I think he is still one of the best T20 bowlers in the world. Yeah. Um, I think if you're going for a spinner, you it's a conversation between Ravi Bishnoi and Ravi Ashwin. Yeah. As I much mean, as it pains me. I mean, I would I would go with the spinner if it was depending on what the game is. I think mm. either Ashwin or uh, I guess Ashwin's a great twelfth man to have. If we go with yeah. Shami, because if you're playing in a turning track in Bangladesh, then you probably want the extra spinner. If you're playing on a seeming wicket in England, you probably want Mohammed Shami. So yeah, I, th- I think having that works. So yeah, that's our 11. Uh, you should be able to see it on the screen right now. So let us know your thoughts. Um, you can write your 11 in the comments. That'd be great to see. Uh, if you've enjoyed, leave a like. You can also subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also become a member, which gives you some perks. Maybe we'll even feature your 11 on a future video if we do things like this. So, yeah, let us know. Um, Keep doing, keep giving us the support you are because it's really appreciated. And we'll see you in the next one. I'm confident that you're going to nail down the number seven here already. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's celebrate. Go on, Zach. Tell us who it is.